Welcome back to the DSN. I'm your host for this hour, Gary the Numbers Guy, a.k.a. Gary Max. And we got a lot to talk about because, you know, on Mondays, you never run out of stuff to talk about it. Because if you do, you shouldn't be behind this microphone being a talk show host. Let me tell you guys something. I have made so many predictions when it comes to numbers. And so many of them have come true. It's absolutely sickening that I'm not a star by now. It's absolutely sickening to me. Because when you see what is going on in the Middle East right now, who is the one man who told you what the hell is going on right now? Was it Rush Limbaugh? Was it Michael Savage? Was it Glenn Beck? Was there anyone else? No, no, no. It was me, Gary the Numbers Guy. I was the one who told you, watch out for the 11s in 2011. And what has happened? Let's start like this. Egypt fell. On 2-11, their former president by the name of Hosni Mubarak, who was born 5-4-1928. Let's add this up together now, folks. I know some of you guys out there are slow. 5-4-1-9-2-8 adds up to 29. 2 plus 9 equals 11. He has fallen. Since then, two more Arab nations who were aligned with the West are being rocked right now by riots. The first one, Bahrain, where America holds its fifth fleet. That's very important, folks, because it makes sure there, there's no disturbances. That's what the Americans do out there. They're the world's policemen. And Bahrain is being hit in 2011. And wouldn't you know it, their ruler, the crown prince of Bahrain, is born 10-12-1969. Let's do the math again, folks. One, zero, one, two, three. One, nine, six, nine. Adds up to 29. 2 plus 9 equals 11. So now we have two nations who are being led by an 11 life path who are falling. But guess what, folks? I'm not done. Because if you see, if you go to Libya, which is a far bigger nation than Egypt, a big, huge oil producing nation. And by the way, folks, you will be paying more at the gas pump really soon. But if you look at what's going on in Libya right now, Gaddafi, Colonel Gaddafi, who was born 6-7-1942, add everything up, 6-7-1-9-4-2, adds up to 29, 2 plus 9 equals 11, and guess what, he's falling too, but you know what the interesting part is, no one else is talking about this, no one else, hell, can even notice what the hell is going on, except for the people who are listening to the show. Let me tell you guys something. Not even most numerologists understand what's going on. But see, Gary the Numbers Guy does. Because Gary the Numbers Guy knows more than just numerology. He knows more than just history. He understands how the elite, the powers to be, think. Because I use the same stuff they do. Only the difference is I don't have raw blood in me. <laughs> I'm not a blue blood, folks. And for uh, those of you out there who know what that means... Anyways, look at what is happening right now in the Middle East, and it's not going to stop there, folks. You know, the protesters in Bahrain are calling their movement the two, the February 14th movement, because that's exactly where it's, when it started, 214. Let's look at the date, 2-14-2011, adds up to one eleven. 2142011 adds up to 11. So not only did revolt start in Bahrain, they restarted in Iran, a country that was born on 211, the Islamic Republic in Iran. And they restarted the riots in Iran that, that um, started originally in 2009. 2009 adds up to 11. Folks, listen, I'm done debating this with people. I'm done arguing the validity of numerology if you can't see the big events in real history happen on 11 11 uh, uh, 1918 at 11 o'clock when world war one ended if you can't see big events happen on 9 11 or 3 11 in madrid you're losing it folks you really are maybe this shows a little bit above you maybe you guys can all you guys can do is just laugh and giggle at all this stuff i talk about because you know what maybe it's beyond you but I'm telling you who it's not beyond, the people in power. Believe that, folks. Believe the people that power use this information. 
But you know what we're going to talk about today? The different ways people in power right now in the Middle East, from Gaddafi to uh, the Crown Prince of Bahrain to the people in Yemen, how they're dealing with this. And we're going to talk about the uh, aspect the media played in all of this. Let me tell you guys a little story. See, the media played a big part in bringing down Hasni Mubarak because the media was inciting it. See, when people, people are sheep, they're followers. That's basically what they are, useful idiots. And when people see the television promoting revolt, they're going to start doing it. And that's basically what was going on in Egypt. They're promoting the revolt. And Hosni Mubarak, who was dependent on American aid, couldn't really do anything about it. Yeah, I believe it was February the 2nd. He paid a whole bunch of thugs to go beat up the protesters. But he's not taken into the level, level of what Gaddafi is doing in Libya. What Gaddafi is doing in Libya is he's a straight-up butcher. I mean, <laughs> listen, it's one thing to try to bring down a, a revolt, but to use aircraft fighter pilots against your own people? Wow. Wow. That has to be a cold-blooded murderer, right? Well, that's what we have to go back to the birthdays. See, Gaddafi, born 6'7", 1942, is a little bit different than Mubarak, who was born 5'4", 1928. See, Gaddafi's born on the 7th. And people who are born on the 7th, especially if they're in leadership positions, they do not allow people to challenge their positions of power. They would rather commit murders and atrocities before stepping down. See, Mubarak wasn't ready to go to that level. But Gaddafi is. And so are the Mullahs in Iran. The Mullahs in Iran are um, ready to murder thousands upon hundreds of thousands of people to remain in power. That is not something Mubarak was ready to do. Or even if he was willing to do it, it's not something he would have done because the cameras of the world are all around him. See, in Libya, Gaddafi doesn't care. His son went on national TV a few nights ago and said, we are on the brink of civil war in Libya. And this is how basically it affects you people out there, especially everyone, since most of my audience is in the United States of America. Um, Libya, unlike Egypt, is an oil-producing nation. Libya is in OPEC. And OPEC is part of the oil cartel, along with the heavy player of Saudi Arabia, that basically keep world oil prices stable. And what do I mean by stable? I mean they continue to accept only U.S. currency for their oil production products. Now, Steve, let's say the regime in Libya is removed. I mean, uh, let's say the regime in Saudi Arabia is removed. Well, guess what? The new people in power, they might not be so willing to play by the U.S. rules. Kind of like Saddam Hussein was. See, Saddam Hussein, he didn't want to play by the U.S. rules. That's why when he was um, still in charge of Iraq, he took euros instead of dollars for his oil for Peru program. And basically, if you look at the link between what Saddam Hussein did and what happened to U.S. currency when it comes to its value, they both slipped at the same time. See, when Saddam Hussein only started taking euros for his oil, the dollar slipped about 20 to 25 percent. And that's why Bush sent American tanks into Iraq. And guess what? Within three months, Iraq was trading back in dollars. And here's how I can prove that point. There's one country in Europe, well, actually there's a few, but there's one major power in Europe who's not a part of the euro currency, and that is Great Britain. See, Great Britain is in is tied at, at the hip with the United States because the great um, British pound and the U.S. dollar pretty much rely on each other because the British pound has nothing to do with the euro. So if the dollar defaults, the British pound is next. So they had a very, very keen interest in making sure the U.S. dollar dominance still prevailed in the Middle East. And that's exactly... Why Tony Blair, by the way, Tony Blair, born 5'6", 1953, add everything up together. Again, that adds up to 29. 2 plus 9 equals 11. Notice how all of these world leaders are 11s. 
Next segment, I'm going to tell you why that is. But when it comes down to it, the British, the Americans backed their interests back then because they still wanted to keep the U.S. dollar as the world reserve currency. Those days are over, pal, because let me tell you something. Obama, Obama would rather see this damn currency default. He would rather see the United States of America fall because for the first time, for the first time in American history, we have an anti-American American president. And by the way, Barack Obama, born 8-4-1961, add everything up, 8-4-1-9-6-1, adds up to 29, 2 plus 9 equals 11. But guess what, folks? That all must be a coincidence, right? <laughs> Anyways, you're listening to the DSM. We'll be right back. This is the she calls me for everything. What's with the new camera angle on Gary? What do you mean? I like it. It's closer. It's more personable. <laughs> she checked into the.